Welcome once again to all of you uh, share this message on today. I do not plan on being before you long today, but let's see what the Holy Spirit has to say about that. Um, turn with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Let's look at one verse for now. 1 Peter chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse number 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 7. Some of you know it by heart. You don't even have to turn there. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Amen. If you're taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic... I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. Here in the text, when you go to the beginning of 1 Peter chapter 5, you see Peter, who is inspired by the Holy Spirit, he's writing in the first few verses of this chapter, he's writing first uh, to the church leadership. He's writing to the elders and the pastors and so forth in the first few verses. So verses 1 through 4, he's writing to the leadership. He's writing uh, to these pastors of these, of these churches. And one thing that he tells them, he tells them that their jobs is to shepherd the flock. Okay? Their, 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 their assignment, their job, their duties... It is to shepherd the flock, to take care of the flock, to watch over them. Okay, when they have needs, help them with the needs and the things that they, they come to you with. Okay, your job is to watch over the flock that God has entrusted to you. Okay, that's the job of a pastor. Okay, is to shepherd the flock is to watch over them, make sure that they're covered, make sure that you, you, you pray for them. Um, if, if they reach out to you, your job is to, is to see what the need is and to the best of your ability, help them out with the need that they may have. Um, that's the job of a pastor, the job of a shepherd. And Peter is letting them know, he's saying, hey, your job is to shepherd, is to take care of, of the flock and one thing that Peter tells them he tells them that uh, when you do this um, you are not to have any type of selfish gain uh, in other words you're not doing this for yourself you're not doing this just to be seen just to be recognized you're not doing this for money no your job is to take care of God's people Okay, that's your assignment. It's not to see what you can get out of it yourself. All right, that's what Peter is telling church leadership. He's saying you have to take care of the flock. Don't do it for your own selfish gain. Don't do it for money. Don't do it for the spotlight. Don't do it to be recognized, okay? But when you do it, do it with a servant's heart. Being that you want to serve the Lord by serving his people. Okay? And also, you are to lead by example. Okay? You are to lead the people by example. Uh, he goes on to tell the church leaders in these first uh, few verses is that um, you, know, you are to shepherd. Watch this. You are to shepherd the flock. However, there is going to come a time. When the chief shepherd is going to appear, okay, your job right now is to watch over God's people, okay, and he used the analogy of the shepherd, so your job is to shepherd God's people, but there will become a time when the chief shepherd is going to appear, okay, the chief shepherd meaning Jesus, okay? He is the chief shepherd. So your job right now is to take over or to watch over God's people, to shepherd God's people. But one day the chief shepherd is going to come on the scene, 
Okay. And watch this. When he comes on the scene for those pastors, okay, who have shepherded God's people, they will receive the crown of glory. Okay, that's one of the crowns that will be distributed in heaven one day. Um, we, we taught on the message a few years back on the different crowns that believers uh, are going to receive. Well, this here is for the pastors and so forth. The faithful ones who have pastored and shepherded God's people, okay, one day they will receive the crown of glory. All right, as you continue to read on here, and then go in verses 5 and 6, and he tells the younger people, all right, the, the younger people here, the, 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 the younger men, he tells them, okay, what you need to do, you need to follow the leadership of the pastors, okay? The young men, okay, you are to, 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 to follow the guidance, the, the, the leadership, okay, the tutelage of the pastors, okay? You are to follow them and how they are leading you. But at the same time, as you continue to read in verse number 6, Peter tells them, he says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So he's saying, okay, now you must humble yourselves, okay, unto God. All right, humble yourselves under God. And in due time, when the time is right, when the expiration time has come, Okay, you are going to receive the things in which you are seeking from the Lord, but it's going to come in due time. It's going to come when God says it's going to come, when God is ready to manifest the thing that you're seeking him for in, in due time. But you must first humble yourself. Okay, there has to be a spirit of humility. OK, you have to you have to humble yourself. There have to be a spirit of humility. But at the same time, as you humble yourself to God, you also have to learn how to serve each other. OK, you have to learn how to take care of one another. As I mentioned before, it's not just you trying to see what you can get out of it yourselves, but you are to humble yourself, take care of others, uh, uh, serve others. Humble yourself unto God, and in due time, he's the one that's going to exalt you. He's the one that's going to lift you up. All right. Now, as you continue to, to read on here, uh, it talks about the cares that we, we sometimes have uh, in this world. Um, I was having a discussion with someone a few months back, and the question that they had was, with everything that's going on with, you know, the cares of the world and issues and the challenges that we face, why do we have to face them? Why do we have to go through the things that we go through? And I told her what I'm about to tell you is that it's a very simple answer. OK, you may not like the answer, but it's a very simple answer. The reason we go through the things that we go through is because the fall of man, okay? The, the issues and the, the sin in the world that has come into the world, it is because the fall of Adam in the garden, okay? Things were perfect at first. No sin in the world. God created the earth and in and, and the world in six days, he rested. As a matter of fact, on each day as he was created, he looked at it and said, it was good. And if God says it's good, guess what? It's good. But along the way, his creation messed up what was good. And when Adam fell in the garden, that's when sin came in. And that's when the issues of life and that's when worry and stress and hard labor and birth pains, that's when all of that came 
into the world. So the reason that we go through things in this life is because of the fall of man, the fall of Adam. You see, we are depraved individuals, okay? We need, we, we need the help of the Savior. We are depraved. We, we need someone else to help us when we fall short, when we're going through, when we are struggling with different challenges and so forth. We need someone to help us. It is the state of depravity in which man has. And verse number seven, as Peter is writing this, he, he says, watch this, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. All right. Casting, casting all your care, casting that word, that word casting uh, in this original language, it means to throw upon or to place upon. Think of it like this right here. I, I use two different analogies. One, think of it like this right here. Um, think of a coat rack. Um, you have a coat, a sweater, um, a, 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 a jacket. And with you wanting to hang up that coat, hang up that sweater, hang up that jacket, what you are going to do is you're going to take off that jacket and you're going to hang it on that coat rack, okay? The coat rack is going to hold what you're placing on it. The coat rack is designed and built and is made for uh, to be able to hold the thing, the coat, the jacket, the sweater in which you're placing on it. So even here, Peter says, casting or throw upon or place upon your care. Okay, take off whatever is hurting you, whatever you're going through, whatever challenges that you may be facing. Take it off, okay, take it off and put it on to God, okay? Put it on the coat rack <laughs> because God is built for this. God is made for this. God is designed for this. Not that anyone designed him. He's always been and always will be. But God is, is, is made, okay? Uh, he, he is able, is a better word, way of saying it. He is able to handle what you place upon him. You would cast that care, cast that issue, place upon him what you are going through. That's one analogy. Another analogy is if you have ever been fishing, you know that in order to catch the fish, you have several different ways to do it. You can either throw out a net or you can throw out your fishing line. Well, if you throw out a fishing line, you're casting out your fishing line, okay, to be able to catch fish, all right, or to catch the thing in which you're wanting to catch. Same thing with the net. You will, you will throw out, you will cast out your net to grab the fish or the crab or lobster, or whatever you're trying, to, trying to, to, to get. Okay, you will cast it, you will throw it out there to bring in what you want to bring in. Now, the thing about fishing by throwing out your line or throwing out the net is that when we cast our cares upon God, we should not be reeling back in the thing that we have thrown out to God in the first place. Okay? But that's what happens a lot of times with us. Okay? We'll come to the altar. We'll get on our knees. We'll pray. We'll fast. We'll seek the Lord. We'll give it to Him. But once we give it to Him, we want to grab that thing again. We, we cast it out to Him. Okay, we throw the, the, the net out to him and we want to reel in the things that we're trying to get rid of. Okay, God is saying that cast your cares upon me. But watch this right here. Notice what the verse says. It says casting all, all your care. Okay, all of your care. All means all. All right. 
It says all. The question is, are you casting all of your cares or are you casting some of your cares? <laughs> uh, are you casting all of your cares or are you just simply casting some of them? All right. All means all. It, it doesn't say casting some of your cares upon him. For he careth for you. It says casting all of your cares. Okay. You see some of us. Watch this. Some of us are frustrated. And stressed. And depressed. Okay. Because we're only giving God some of our cares. We're only giving him some of the things that are wearing us down. We're only giving him some of the headaches and some of the challenges in which we have. But God is saying, give it all to me. <laughs> he said, give it all to me. And grace center, this may be a news flash to some of you, but watch this. God can handle it all. <laughs> there you go. Watch this. God can handle it all. All right, so you don't have to worry about just giving him some of the things and some of the issues and some of the headaches in which you have. The word says to give it all to him. It clearly says that casting all your cares upon him. Okay, watch right here. That, 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 that last part there. Casting all your care upon who? Him. Him. Now, I know you love your spouse. I love my spouse, all right? Um, and, and it's okay to talk things out with your spouse and so forth. Uh, they can probably uh, uh, handle some of the things in which you may, <clears throat> you may give to them, but they can't handle it all. Um, you, you, you may have a, a, a prayer partner. Uh, it's okay to have a prayer partner, somebody that you can call upon and you can pray for one another. And if, 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 if you're going through, you call that person, you get on the line and you say, girl, let's pray. Let's fast. Let's seek the Lord. Homie, let's let's let, let's see what God has to say about this. I mean, you you seek your prayer partner. But guess what? They can handle some. But they can't handle all. Um, I just mentioned to you earlier that Peter is writing to the pastors here in verses 1 through 4. He tells them to shepherd the flock. All right. In other words, when the people come to them with issues and concerns and all of that, their job is to help them and assist them with their issues and their concerns. Well, my job as a pastor is the same, is to help and to assist. Well, watch right here. I can handle some of your issues. I can handle some of your concerns. I can handle some of your headaches. But watch this. I cannot handle them all. <laughs> you can call me. You can text me. Look, I'm going to be there for you. If something is going on, I'm going to roll my sleeves up and say, hey, let's talk about it. Let's, let, let's see what God has to say. Let's, let's get on our knees. Let's pray. Let's fast. Let's, let's, look, I got a word for you right here from the Lord. And, but we can do all of that. But at the end of the day, your spouse, your prayer partner, the male man, the pastor, they cannot handle all of the things in which you are going through. There is only one that I know who can handle it all. Okay. Jesus can handle it all. Okay. Peter says, give it all to him. Okay, give it all. Don't just give him some, but give it all to him. God can handle it all. Don't try to just give him some, but give it all to him. And watch right here. Casting, it entails the act of our will. We have to want to give it to him. Mm. Um, we have to we have to humble ourselves like the word says. We have to humble ourselves 
under the mighty hand of God, okay, and give it to him. Okay, it is an act of our will. Okay, and sometimes we get in the way of allowing God to be able to do God things. You see, God is able to do God things if we get out of the way. Sure, he's God. He's mighty. He's strong. He's sovereign. He can, he can push us out of the way and handle things. He's big enough, bad enough to do that. But God is also a gentleman as well. So if we are, hmm, if we are bogarting God, <laughs> say, God, I, I, I got this. I can handle this. You know, I, 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 believe I have all this stuff on my plate, but I got it, God. God's like, okay. Have at it. You see, giving God it all, it entails the act of our will. We have to give it all to him and say, God, I cannot handle this. I cannot handle that. I cannot handle all of this. So I'm giving this to you. And I'm asking you to help me with all of this that I'm giving you. Okay. But what happens sometimes, watch it. What happens sometimes is that uh, we'll pick and choose which things to give God. We'll pick and choose, okay, this, I thought God can handle that, but I, this right here, I see if I can take care of this myself. So what happens is you end up frustrated. You end up with headaches and you're popping pills. Some of us, we end up on the bottle or doing other things because we thought we could handle it and we tried to handle it and we found out that we couldn't. But the whole time, God is saying, just give it all to me. Okay, cast, throw upon, place upon everything that you're going through, give it to me. Okay, watch this. The, the, the second part of that verse, which is very interesting, it says, for he careth for you. For he careth for you. I had a good friend, um, God bless his soul, he has went on to be with the Lord now. Um, his name is Sean. He used to, um, he would read scripture. He would place his name um, in the scripture. So in other words, he would say, um, uh, 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 for he careth for Sean. <laughs> he said all the time. He said, uh, for he careth for Sean. He, for he careth for CJ. For he careth for Tanya. You know, uh, he would place his own name in there. Um, which I, I use from time to time. I got it from him. In other words, uh, he was he, he was making the scripture uh, more personal. He was making the scripture just make it personal to him. He say, "For he careth for me. He careth for CJ. He careth for Tanya. He careth for Ashley." Okay. So in other words. You have to make this scripture personal, all right? And Grayson, I know it may be hard to fathom, but God is concerned about every area in your life. Every area in your life. God is concerned about it. The big stuff and the small stuff. He's concerned about if you catch COVID or if you scrape your knee. He's concerned about it all. Okay. And one of the, the, the reasons I know that he's concerned about everything about you is watch right here. The word says that God has numbered the hairs on our head. He's numbered each hair on your head. In other words, each hair has a number. <laughs> the ones you currently have and the ones you don't have no more. <laughs> he, he has numbered each hair. So when a hair falls out, he counts the number of the hair that fell out. <laughs> cool. he, he has counted all of the hairs on your head. And watch this. 
I don't believe I would be violating that text or uh, uh, um, stretching the text or twisting the text to say that I believe that God has numbered all of the hairs on your body. Yeah, oh, gosh. Um, um, in, in other words, uh, uh, God uh, is, is, is so uh, um, in tune with you. Uh, God knows so much about you. God loves you so much. God cares for you so much that he would take the time. <laughs> he would take the time to place a number on every hair on your body. The ones you have and the ones you have no more. Watch this. Even the ones you place on your head. <laughs> He, he has numbered all of the hairs in which you have. If he has placed a number on all of the hairs in which you have, don't you think, hey, wouldn't it just come to your mind to realize that he is concerned about you? The big stuff and the small stuff and even the stuff in between. He is concerned about you. He loves you so deeply. The Father loves us so deeply. He is so concerned about us. And sometimes we, we get full of ourselves thinking that we can handle the small stuff. And that God is not concerned about this. It's, this is too itty bitty for him. God, God is more concerned with bigger things. Have, have you ever heard that before? You know, God is busy handling other stuff. I've heard that before. God is never too busy for us. The big stuff and the small stuff. We have to give it all to him. He cares for us. He loves us that deeply. Okay? We have to stop trying to hang on things and try to figure it out for ourselves. It's like a little kid, you know, when a small child, when they, you know, begin to walk and begin to get into things and begin to, you know, be able to really talk and learn things for themselves. If you try to do something for them, like for example, if, if, if you if you teach them how to tie their shoe, um, um, and if, if their, their shoe legs become untied, if you bend down and try to help them to tie their shoe, they'll be like, I got it. <laughs> I got it, daddy. I got it, mommy. You know? We're sometimes like look he is with God. Uh, God is saying, if 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 something is concerning you, just give it to me. But what do we do? I got it. I can handle it. I get through this by myself. God, you're busy with other stuff. You you, you have you you have you have wars to 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 to, to, to bring to an end. OK, you have people who, who have COVID and has, you know, HIV and, 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 and has diabetes and, and has all these other things. Yeah, you have bigger problems on your hand, God. You, you know, you don't have time for this little itty bitty small stuff right here that's on my plate. So I'll handle this and you handle all of that when I get to a real big issue that I think deserve a big God, then I give it to you. That's sometimes our thinking is that we want to hang on to the small stuff and we think God is too busy or he's not so concerned with even the small things in our lives. But the scripture is clear. OK, it says casting all of your cares upon him. Why? Because he careth for you. Okay. He's concerned about you. He don't want us to be stressed out all of the time. He don't want us depressed and he, he, he doesn't want us to be popping pills because we have headaches trying to figure out how to make things work. He said, no, give it to me. Place it upon me. Throw it upon me. Cast it upon me. And I am built. I am made to be able to hold the very thing in which you place upon me. Okay. You see, we have to develop an I don't care anymore mentality. 
I just don't care anymore. Why don't I care? Because I gave it to God. And since I gave it to him, I gave him all of my cares. I don't have any more cares to be concerned about. So I don't care about the cares that I gave to God because God is concerned about my cares and he's going to take care of my cares that I gave to him. <laughs> Casting all of your care upon him. Gracious, when you give your concerns and your burdens to God, let him handle it. <laughs> I have some, 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 some weights here. I'm, I'm bringing my mess to a close here, but I have some weights here. Um, this is about an eight pound uh, weight right here. Uh, not too heavy, not too heavy at all. I can, I can do this all day, all day, all day right here, baby, all day long. I can curl this, 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 this kettle right here all day. It, it, ain't, it ain't nothing but a thing. It ain't nothing but a chicken wing. It, this ain't nothing right here. I, I, can, I can curl this all, I can put it over my head. I can put it on my head. I, I can work with this thing all day. It's just nothing. Piece of cake, right? Um, but what happens is this eight pounder right here, uh, by you working out all day, right? You, 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 you're carrying this weight. Which is small. It's only eight pounds, right? It's, it's small. I can I can handle the small stuff. Um, so you're you're working this thing out. At least you think on your own, day after day after day. And after a while, the the eight pound it feels like feels like a ten pounder. Yeah, you're like, oh, this is a little bit heavier. It was. It was small at first. I thought I could, I thought I could handle that thing, but, but you know, this right here is not too bad. It's only you know, you know, a little bit more weight, but I'm still handling it. Yeah, I, I still got it under control. You know, not too bad. But what happens is the eight pounder turns into the ten pounder, and you, you still think you got it, but it's a little bit heavy. You still try to handle it, but what happens is that. Then, what was an 8-pounder turned into a 10-pounder, but now it's a 25-pounder. Uh, yeah, you, you was handling the 8-pounder. You were handling the 10 pounds, and you said at 8 pounds, I got it. I'm not going to give it to God, uh, but it got a little bit heavier along the way and a little bit heavier along the way, and then it's like, ah, uh, oh, good test. Okay, uh, it's, it's, it's 25 pounds, a little bit, ah. Uh, I got it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's 25 pounds. It's a little bit heavier. You're like, yeah, this is this kind of heavy right now. Um, you, I, I thought I could handle this, but I'm now beginning to get muscle failure. And what I thought I could handle uh, is it's getting a little bit heavier. Um, so what happens, Grayson, is that when you had the eight pounder, that's when you should have given it to God. Uh, even when you realize up to 10 pounds, you should have also given it to God. But now you find yourself in a situation where the weight is beginning now to wear you down because you did not initially, in the beginning, give him the small stuff. But now you are finding yourself with the weight of the world holding you down. And you say, I should have given him the small stuff first. But since I did not give him the small stuff first, what I was carrying got heavier and heavier and heavier when the whole time God says, cast all your care upon me. Oh, watch right here. He said, if you give me the eight pounder, if you give me this, you, you will have to handle that. <laughs> if you give me the small stuff, you may not have to handle the big stuff. If you give me what's plaguing your mind, what's on your plate, what's was, was, was holding you down, just give it to me. Give me the small stuff. Get it out the way. No matter how small you think it is, doesn't matter you. If you think you can handle this all day long, you can handle that pressure. You can handle, you know, what the doctor said. This is a small thing. I don't care what the doctor said about that. Or I don't care what the loan officer said about that. I don't care what the school said about my kid. We can handle this, but what happened is when you when you think you got it under control, when you think you can handle it, 
bigger issues arise. And God is saying, if you give me the small stuff first, you won't have to handle the big stuff. He said, cast, place upon, okay, throw upon all of your cares. The small stuff and the big stuff. Now, sometimes the big stuff would just fall upon us. It's not like it was ever small to begin with. It's like somebody's just giving it to you. They just hand it over to you. You're like, oh. When they first give it to you, give that to him as well. Give him even the stuff in between. Small stuff, stuff in between, and the big stuff. God says, give it all to me. When you give it all to me, I'm able to help you with what you're going through. Don't try to figure all this stuff out for yourself. You're going to find yourself going crazy. But give it to me. Cast all your care upon me. Why? Because I care for you. I love you so deeply. I have so much invested in you. I created you. And since I created you, I created you for a purpose and an assignment. And you, you, you have a purpose if you're still here. And I want you to fulfill your purpose and your assignment. But if you keep on thinking you can handle all these weights of the world, you're not going to be able to fulfill the assignment or the purpose in which I have placed in you. For these next... 21 days of this fast in which we are participating in, family, let's cast the small stuff, the big stuff, and the stuff in between. Let's, let's cast it. Let's place it upon God. As we're on this fast, seeking the Lord each and every day. Let's give him all of our cares, all of our worries, all of our concerns and issues. Let's give it to him. Let's develop an I don't care anymore mindset. Not that you're being nonchalant about what you're going through and about what's happening in your life. You're just simply realizing I don't care about this anymore because I've given my cares to God. It's my fact for the next 21 days. If something, if something happens, something pop off, you need to say, I don't care no more. Because you're giving your cares to God. You are placed it at his throne. He's saying, God, this may be small right now, but I don't want it to, to grow. I don't want it to get larger and larger and larger. So I'm giving this to you right now. And I know that you're going to help me with it because I'm casting all of my cares upon you because I know that you care for me. The virtual doors of the church are open. The invitation is extended. Perhaps you're not saved and you're, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. But you... You hear me talking about casting all of your cares upon him and you may be going through some things and you're trying to figure out what do I do? Who do I cast my cares upon? Who do I turn to when I'm going through? You can turn to Jesus. He cares for you. He loves you. He loves you so much that he died for you. How many of you would die for someone that you don't care about? God was so concerned and loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. Jesus loves us so much that he, he went and he obeyed the father willingly and he died for us. If you're not saved, 
and you want to receive Jesus Christ on today, meaning that when you leave this earth, you're guaranteed a spot in heaven. You're guaranteed to walk with Jesus. Walk the streets paved with gold. If you want to receive Jesus Christ on today, say this prayer with me. Say, dear God, thank you for thinking about me. Thank you for having me on your mind. Today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus came, that Jesus died. And that Jesus rose from the grave. So on today, I place my faith in him. If you have prayed that prayer, you're saved. There are angels in heaven rejoicing because you have given your life to Jesus Christ. If that's you, if you have uh, prayed that prayer, we would love to connect with you. Let us know by you know, placing a comment in the comment section or send us an email uh, to info at the grace center, ga .org. We would love to connect with you.